Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you, non farm payrolls day, November 4th. Let's have a quick look around. Dollar sold off a little bit overnight. I think just positioning, people getting a bit caught on the long dollar trade post FOMC. It still looks like to me long dollars are the way, uh, so you kind of want to feather into long dollars. Um, at sensible points. I have the Kiwi chart up here. You can kind of, with pretty good sensibility, say we're probably not going to get over 59.43 anytime soon. That's obviously a, a long ways away from 58.16, uh, almost 2%. So be careful about your risk reward and whatnot. But, um, you know, use your yield. You know, follow the U.S. yields and follow the general price action and, and look for places, I think, to get long dollars. We do have European uh, services PMI. These are final numbers that are coming out today. I certainly don't think these things, these numbers are going to be very strong. We also have Lagarde speaking um, at 1030. She might be hawkish, um, but gosh, she's lost so much credibility. Um, you know, it's hard to even pay attention when she speaks anymore. I mean, if you think about, I mean, we all remember when Cliché spoke, and you could just, you know, two words out of his mouth, you could just smash your oh yeah, and a lot of guys did that for, for a year. Um, Lagarde doesn't have that kind of, uh, doesn't have that kind of pull. Anyway, let's look at yields here to start. A bullish day yesterday, but a bit of a, bit of a tail now. Um, 08 has been our sort of bull bear moment. So below 08, I get nervous, or I don't get nervous. I start thinking, shit, rates could go lower. But above 408, I think we're going to see rates continue to plod higher. Um, entrenched inflation looks like the correct viewpoint going forward. So, you know, all of these charts are going to be very similar, right? The Kiwi chart. This is the Aussie chart. It looks exactly the same. We're squeezing out Aussie shorts from yesterday. Dollar CAD. Um, Dollar CAD's a little bit of a different beast. Just because oil um, is through the roof today, up at uh, 90 bucks. And also, we have Canadian employment numbers as well. And we have this crazy 135 technical level. Um, so... Let's see what let's see what CAD does. Um, but you know, it's a similar chart. We're, we're you know we're a long ways away from from 135. The figure we're we're a percent away. I don't think CAD's going to go down two percent today. So, um, but watch oil on this. This is getting a little bit of traction because of the oil as well. Um, Euro, you're going to see the charts same, but a little more muted. You can see the euro sucking a bit of wind here. Um, not looking too robust. Cable. It's a good call yesterday, right at the open. Sell cable. I, of course, didn't get enough on. I mean, I was short cable, but I didn't have enough. It's fucking annoying. Um, but wow. I mean, shit went down 200, 250 points. Straight line. Cable's in trouble. The UK's in trouble. Um, this is about the last thing. Even if the dollar, e even if rates go lower in the U.S. and the dollar weakens, I don't. I'm not super keen on buying sterling. I'm very interested in selling it um, on any movements to the right. Smack the pony, uh, as they said in the late '90s. Um, dollar yen again, tug of war. It's bullish because of rates. It's bearish because the BOJ may come in. Uh, we're not doing much in dollar yen here, especially because it feels like we're in the middle of nowhere, right? So things get interesting up at 151 um, to sell, uh, maybe, depending on where rates are. And things get interesting if we get down to the bottom of this range. Let's call it 140. Um, here at 148, no idea. Dollar Swiss, if rates do go lower, this is our horse. So if rates go below 408, we tap dollar Swiss a little bit. Kiwi, we already know. These cross yens, um, just trading around, not much action going on. I will bring up this um, 
euro sterling chart just because it had a big big day yesterday obviously with cable collapsing you know if you're going to sell sterling just sell it against the dollar don't bother selling it against the euro this is just a range trade and we're dead smack in the middle there but that was a big day yesterday euro yen again more range trading i do want to sell euro yen at 150 just logistically from a long-term psychological perspective but that's so far away now not happening dollars are just hanging around on the top side here uh obviously south africa is fucked um it looks kind of like a, this is also a rage trade i haven't i still haven't taken the time to really drill down on what's news in, in sa right now uh historically everybody knows um I'm not a big fan of emerging markets, and the money to be made on these things is always on the short side. Carry trades on emerging markets are for buffoons. Um, in my uh, humble opinion, Euro Aussie not doing anything, Swiss yen, nobody cares. Um, let's flip down to crypto because that was some interesting shit last night. Matic, obviously, bang. We talked about this yesterday. Um, it's a nice little move, 18%. Uh, we own this shit. We actually lightened up uh, a little bit today just because of this, um, so I would say, hysterically bullish bar. But the thing about crypto, when you get hysterically bullish bars, it can also be followed by many, many more hysterically bullish bars. So, I mean, allegedly we're professional traders. We're very good at risk management. Uh, this is what we do, right? we do we're not afraid to take profit we had a plan you know you buy 90s you got to sell some at 110 right uh, which is what we did but we're still long this stuff um, and now we're looking to accumulate on any retracements um, so this is that was a nice little gift I would say this morning I didn't even read the news flow I'm sure this is just the JP Morgan transaction uh, is getting everybody you know, knickers in a twist here. Solana, which we're also long, plotting here, mid-range, Ethereum. The thing with Ethereum now is the 200-day is 1660. Um, so that's pretty close. You can see this thing breaking now over the weekend. Um, and, man, we haven't been across the 200-day uh, properly in a long time. Let's see, since the beginning of the year. So we've had a whole year basically under the 200 day. Um, obviously, the 200 day is on its knees. We crossed it on the downside up at 3,400. We're buying it now at 1660. You can see how trend following works, by the way, as an aside. Anyone who is risk managing Ethereum had to get short at around 3425. And then you just sit there, you sit there. You may have lost a little money here. But, you know, you, you, you may have gotten long there. It looks like it was probably a scratch. But then you're just sitting, waiting, waiting, waiting. So if you had, if you had a long-term trend-following system and it just had the 200-day moving average and you were just long above the 200-day sh or short below it, you can see how that shit might work, right? You, you're short at 3,400. Now you're going to be buying at 1,660. Um funny sometimes the keep it simple stupid is the best is the best way uh bitcoin we don't care we don't trade bitcoin uh, we love the idea of bitcoin but there's so many problems with it and proof proof of work the consensus mechanism is elegant but problematic uh if you want to make this thing global um i'm not saying bitcoin's going to zero that's definitely not true but bitcoin has to solve some logistical problems with their with the consensus protocol for this thing to really get some legs. So, you know, not to beat a dead horse, we watch Ethereum, Solana, Matic, Phantom, uh, Cardano, Near, and Avax. This is our basket. These are all staking coins. And we stake them, so we own them and stake them. You get, you know, between 5 and 10% interest for owning them. And then you can hedge with perpetuals. Um, all done you know, at FTX, um, although the Ethereum staking 
we do elsewhere, but it's an, that's a story for another day. Anyway, I've said enough. Non-farms today, we do have PMIs in Europe. Um, you know, what we're going to do with this is we're just going to watch yields, right? Like, I'm not even going to... Yeah, I'm not even going to spend like a million minutes, million seconds waiting for this number that's supposed to be around 200,000. Um, we just want to see how the yields react. Take a breath, give it a minute, let it settle, uh, and then take action. Won't be speaking to you until Monday, so everyone have a good weekend. Good luck today trading. Go make some dough. Uh, catch you later, alligator.